Hi, everyone. I'm super happy to be with you today to talk about the lack of transparency in, in crypto space. My name is Mike. I'm the co-founder of Elementus. So the idea is that if you look at blockchain data, no one has an easy access to it. So if I ask each one of you how much money has been raised through ICOs until today, I would have each of the time a new answer, different one, right? There is no one who tells you what's going on into the space through using blockchain data, actually, not just asking to people. If you use a block explorer to check blockchain data, what's really interesting is that it's like looking at the keyhole of a door to check what's going on into the next room. But what if you can just open the door, right? That's what we want to do at Elementus. What we're doing is collecting, organizing, you know, and analyzing blockchain data, making them universally you know, understandable and useful. So the idea is to build this unique database with all the blockchain data in it, so that you have a single access point to actually build your application for trading, investment decision making, if you're in financial institution, or for compliance, you know, we want to check if your clients are not involved with dark web addresses, right? Or if you want to do research, university, and you want to understand crypto economy, what's the velocity of the tokens and so on. You need actual blockchain data to do so. So the idea is that we provide an API where you can just you know, call it and build your application in your own service using our data. So we have two different aspects to do that. The first one is we standardize the blockchain data, because right now it's a mess. It's really optimized for you know, scalability, so it's not readable. For example, what's thing that's interesting with Ethereum is that you can easily check the Ether transaction, but the tokens themselves, they are not stored on the blockchain. It's just a hash code, and you need to run the Ethereum virtual machine to be able to read those transactions, which is a really difficult problem to tackle. So that's what we're doing first, standardizing those blockchain data. And the second aspect is we identify entities behind the transactions. Right, right now, everything is about pseudo-anonymous account sending money to pseudo-anonymous account. But what if you can know the accounts of Coinbase, for example, yeah? all the exchange platforms, or crypto funds, right? like Pantera, for example, or all the ICO teams actually in the space, and you can monitor the funds going in and going out. Right? That would be awesome. Well, that's exactly what we're doing. And right now, for example, we have coverage of 80% of the Ethereum network in terms of account identified. So here I'm going to talk to you about two case studies using our solution. The first one is related to ICOs and how they can manipulate the crypto industry using blockchain. And the second aspect will be about Ethereum itself taking a big step back and trying to understand what's going on into the larger trend. So here I'm showing you an example about car taxi. It's just an example, it's really arbitrary. Many more people are, going to, um, doing, are doing what I'm going to show you. So they, they claim on Twitter they raised $7 million last year. So let's check what's going on into the blockchain. Each red dot is an account owned by Car Taxi. On the right, you have the pre-sale account, right? That is sent to the private investors. They can send the money. On the left, you have the public sale account, the red dot on the left, where all the investors in blue are sending Ether to those accounts. And usually in the ICO world, you have a multi-sig wallet in the middle where the fund converge, but since you need several private keys uh, within the team that are distributed, you make sure that there is no hack possible, or that if one team member tries to steal the money, it's not possible. So the idea is that during the ICO, the fund is supposed to converge there, but not move. So what's interesting is that if you look at Etherscan and you count the amount of money on the left dot, the public sale, you count the, flow, the money flowing in, you count $5.8 million. Right? But what you don't see is actually that the money is being sent to this multi sig wallet, and then being sent back to the public cell. So the analogy in our world, traditional world, is like having one dollar in your bank account and sending it to another bank account that you own. And you do that one million times. And you say that you own one million dollars. Right? That's exactly the same. So what's the actual number? Two million dollars in total instead of seven million dollars. That's pretty insane. But who cares, right? What are the consequences? Well, actually, <laughs> You create FOMO, because those guys on Twitter, they say, oh, there is one week left to invest. We already raised $7 million. Our hot cap is at eight. Invest, right? Even worse, coin market cap. They have no idea what's going on into the blockchain, right? They have to rely on the trust. You know, they have on the ICO teams. They have to ask, how much money have you raised? So Cardaxi will say $7 million. Awesome. So then they are on the coin market cap, $7 million instead of two, and then the coin is traded on Binance or whatever uh, at a higher price than it should be. Pretty clear, right? Well, what happens if you can spot those kind of things in real time? That would be awesome, right? 
Well, that, you can count on elementaries to do those kind of things. So next step is, you know, how Ethereum is being used. Because we focused on the ICO for this use case, but I think from a financial institution point of view or government's point of view, you want to understand how big it's going, right, and how it's being used. So the data I'm showing here is the actual usage of Ethereum by identifying the accounts, right, by knowing which exchange platform or which, which wallet and which ICO teams, you know, own in which wallets and so on. So what's really interesting is that half of Ethereum is being used to exchange value. Half of it is not. And one example that is completely crazy, it's completely insane, spam token transfer. This is the equivalent of spam emails. Completely insane. It's a marketing tool. You airdrop your token that are worthless with, in the smart contract, the name of your company or the URL of your website. And you give it for free for token holders right? or ether holders. So one day, as a user, you just open your wallet and you see, oh, there is this car taxi token. Let's invest. Right? Let's check it out. But it it's actually doesn't make any sense. So it's very interesting that a fifth of Ethereum is being used for that. The other aspect is the exchange, withdraw, and deposits. Again, a fifth of it is used for risk management because people don't trust centralized exchange to keep their money there. So they have to put it in cold storage. So Ethereum is not used to exchange value. It's used for risk management. The same for the pass-through tokens. You know about this example where you send money between two different accounts right, to inflate it. That's some kind of pass-through tokens. It's a transfer between two accounts that you own. It's the same entity. There is no exchange of value between two individuals. And then you have the mining pools and the real token transfers. And the 21% overs, that includes DApps usage, ICO issuing the token, uh, you know, people just making some kind of transfer uh, for OTC whatsoever. So it's, it's really the minority of the network, <laughs> which is supposed to be the majority, right? It's Ethereum. So to conclude very fastly, we have three points. The first one is it's extremely difficult to make sense of blockchain data, and we try to solve that problem. The second is there is ICO fraud, and the third one is Ethereum network is only halfway used to exchange value. So to conclude long term, the idea is that whenever you had a new way to exchange information, you had a new way to index everything, right? To navigate into it. With Google, right, and internet, you have this search engine. Well, we believe that in the blockchain world, you need a search engine for blockchain, which is elementous. So if you're passionate about crypto and data and want to work with us or you know, use our data, just write me an email on the bottom left or on Telegram. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Mike.